lived in the worst parts of St. Louis, became a petty thief, you know, as a young kid, as a 13, 14 year old kid, and he was gigantic and he couldn't read and he had nothing going for him in this life. He was out in the fields working by the time he was eight years old. He was whipped by his father to force him to work harder and Sonny had the, the marks to, to prove it. Getting beaten as a child, you know, really affect your outlook on how you see things. If you had hope for a better life, you would live your life differently. He didn't have hope for a better life. He was at the dark side of St. Louis at the kind of real poor section, and he saw how the poor people got money. They robbed and steal. I think what he discovers when he's a teenager is that his size can be intimidating and he can maybe use that to his advantage. He went to rob a gas station, he went to rob a restaurant, and they used a gun in the, in the commission of these crimes. After Sonny was tried, he got uh, five years in jail. That was the sentence for armed robbery at the time. And he went to the penitentiary in Jefferson, which was a really tough place. Sonny had beaten up all the inmates that dared get in the ring with him. They couldn't get anybody to fight him. Any, convict by himself. They had to put two or three in the ring with him to get him any kind of exercise. So I knew he, he had to be a very strong, powerful man. Father Stevens thought, well, let's, let's see how he could do with a pro. So they bought in Furman Wilson, who was considered the best heavyweight in the neighborhood. He lasted two rounds with Sonny. They didn't want to live their life in prison no more. They didn't want to live their life in the streets. And that's why he, he excelled and did so well. When, when somebody like Sonny Liston comes out of jail, becomes a boxer. He beat people up in the street because other people paid him money to do so. Sonny Liston was a, a badass fighter, an ex-con, a bully, a thug. He won his first fight by knockout and then continued the early series of bouts in St. Louis, winning by knockouts. Floyd felt that in order to have any integrity, personal integrity, he had to fight Sonny Liston. So he overrode D'Amato's concerns. Before the fight, Sonny Liston goes into a Spartan condition. He had really kind of picked up the rhythm of his training. There were longer, there were harder sessions. He really looked leaner and harder and faster. He gets himself into the best condition he will ever be for the rest of his life. He's primed to fight and try to take the title. Sonny's taking these medicine balls in his stomach. Boom, boom, boom. And I'm looking at Sonny's face. He all but yawned as the ball hit his stomach, and I'm saying, I thought there was two chances for Floyd, Slim and none. Slim just went out the door. I remember when they came in the ring. Listen was simply staring across the ring at Patterson. And Patterson was trying not to look, but every once in a while he looked. And Customato was saying, I have faith in you, you can do it. America he wasn't struck by lightning because he didn't have any faith in him. Fight? There was no fight. <laughs> it, it was a slaughter. Once he was on the inside, you know, Liston just took him apart. And Liston just moves in, catches him with a left. Well, from the outset, I'd say that Sonny Liston belongs among the five greatest heavyweights of all time. He had a left jab in front of him, which is probably the best in all heavyweight history. Had the kind of a jab that went through you. And if Sonny looks at the world around him, you know, what does he see? He sees violence. Liston was considered to be Godzilla. He was going to reign for a thousand years. And he was so good that nobody thought anybody in the world could ever, never, ever beat him. He was a badass guy. When he became heavyweight champ, I think the perception was he's going to be the title holder for the next 20 years. Nobody's going to beat this man. Sonny Liston had this dynamic jab, the left jab. He'd get you going and you could not stop him. And then if you try to overcrowd him, he'd hit you with his right hand. And it was really strong and powerful man. The, probably the strongest heavyweight I'd ever dealt with. He's the meanest fighter that ever lived. No one's more intimidating than Sonny Liston, not even myself. And he had this very forbidding, intimidating, utterly hostile manner about it. Sonny Liston, I watched him here in the gym a few months ago when he was here to fight Howard King. 
and he can hit a guy in the elbows and just about break his arm. He knocked the stuffing out of the headgear. I mean, this guy could really hit the stitching on the headgear. When he hit you, it came apart. Nobody ever hit me like that guy. Every time he hit me, he broke something. I went to 10 rounds with him and he broke my nose, my left cheekbone, and gave me 72 stitches. I was an intimidator until I fought Tony Liston. Tony Liston, I think, was possibly the, the greatest intimidator of all time. I've seen him stare guys down where they, they were so scared climbing up the ring steps they could barely get in the ring. Tidally held is the embodiment of power, heavyweight champion of the world, and yet he owned nothing, least of all himself.